I got the Tesla Electrophone, but not just that. I've actually spent the last six months, one by one, buying up eight of the rarest limited edition smartphones in the world. So let's see if they're worth it. Getting more and more expensive as we go. Rules and stickers is the first thing. A standard OnePlus charger, the phone, a classic red cable, but then also a secret compartment, which is hiding this bespoke Pac-Man case inside of it. I freaking love this phone. There's a whole suite of custom Pac-Man wallpapers. OnePlus has retrofied the icons and the interface. The Pac-Man eats the dot as you scroll. <laughs> this is wild. There's a brand new fingerprint scanning animation. It's actually unlocking so fast I can't see it properly. There are challenges within the phone that actually unlock new Pac-Man themed goodies. There's a new camera filter just for this phone, but that's not even the coolest bit. What do you think to this back panel? It's okay, right? Kind of plain, just a single Pac-Man floating randomly over here, but then you turn the lights off to reveal what he's actually doing there. Crazy to think that this is like the cheapest phone on the entire lip. Literally every part of this packaging is rammed full of Dragon Ball Easter eggs. I'm not a die-hard fan of the show, but I did used to watch the episodes as a kid and man, this is taking me way back. Even the SIM ejector tool is shaped like a Dragon Ball. And then we get the phone. What a color. It's a really considered balance between the blue and the orange. Love that little accent right there. This is stunning. And it's it's just the right amount of customized. Like it's very clear that this is a Dragon Ball Z phone, but at the same time, I'm just glad that it doesn't have the entire cast's faces plastered over it. We've got the usual set of custom wallpapers and also an icon pack that auto applies to every icon, not just a few that it's been configured for. I appreciate the effort, but that doesn't mean that I think it looks Good. But one thing that they've absolutely smashed here is the Dragon Ball Z charging animation that videos in this series, you will know that Oppo knows how to make a limited edition. Tell me this isn't the coolest smartphone box you've ever seen. So you know the theme here is League of Legends. Well, this rocket is one of the special moves that you can use in the game. So in the bottom compartment, you get a figure. That's the character whose move it is. But slide out the cylinder and you get two further sections. The first has a case for the phone, very precise and matte. And then below that, you get the bullet necklace that this League of Legends character is known for wearing. But this is my favorite bit. That necklace doubles as a secret SIM ejector tool to make sure that you always have one with you at all times. Come to think of it, I, I probably wouldn't recommend wearing a bullet around your neck all the time. The other side has the phone, a completely custom 65 watt charger, and of course a cable to go with it. I still can't get over the fact that this box is freaking rocket. Oh, the buttons, this is so slick. The fact that you have the neon blue and purple around the edges, the textured matte finish in the middle, the League of Legends logo engraved on the side rails, as well as, check this out, the buttons on either side are themed to the color of the side that they're on. This wallpaper is wild. That transition though, oh, these phones get me far too excited. <laughs> and the Android skin is very heavily customized, maybe too heavily customized, but Oppo has not let me down when it comes to effort. There's an LED ring around the cameras. Very cool, very impractical, given that you can't actually see it while you're using the phone. And also that it's barely brighter than the neon edges. All right. Ramping up further then to number five. This smartphone, designed by one demanding beautiful games ever on a mobile. Oh Lord. <laughs> These boxes, they keep getting better and better. There's an envelope, which contains what I'm assuming is codes for in-game items and a pin badge. Can't say I'll be wearing that one. And then if we turn this top layer around, there's also a poster of one of the Genshin characters using this specific OnePlus phone. Again, that's kind of a really weird specific thing to want to use though. Oh, this is nice though. Then there's a case which has multiple layers in its design for a bit of depth. It also has an external cooling system, custom branded too. It's a really thoughtful inclusion. And then the phone box, which below the outer skin is, is a much more traditional affair. You get the device on top and then a more standard OnePlus charger, OnePlus case with a rubbery material and a normal red OnePlus cable. Uh, it kind of looks like most of the budget went into the box contents. The phone itself is pretty vanilla looking. I feel like there should at least be some sort of custom icon pack or custom wallpaper, but there's nothing. So I guess the only standout feature is this. Plug this in, turn that on. Wow, that's actually very quiet for how fast the fan is spinning. And that is like freezing cold to the touch. So it probably will help quite a lot with sustained gaming performance. Oh, it is actually also cooling my hands from the sides. That's Getting to the extremely hard to find rare phones, hence the $1,200 price tag. Worth it for these peels though. Wow. 
Goodness me. You might have heard of a manga series called Detective Conan. It's literally been running since 1996, hugely popular in Japan. And this building you're looking at is an extremely faithful 3D recreation of the secret detective agency that the main character works from, right down to the coffee shop that they actually use as a disguise. It opens from the top with an insert just containing a couple of manuals. The phone is the next thing you see, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so the second layer has four key things. A key ring with a pickle on it. Conan's iconic bow tie, memorialized as a fridge magnet. Probably the most elaborate sim ejector tool that I've ever seen. And then a very custom case with even a custom texture on the inside. But we can go deeper, my friends. And my gosh, this would be heaven for a Conan fan. There's a custom blue and red cable, dare I say suspiciously close to Spider-Man colors. A custom 65 watt fast charger. I'm starting to enjoy these charge appeals. Very underrated. <laughs> and then a pair of holographic earphones. All right, let's see this phone. Got to set it up. <laughs> What's going on here? This is weird. Deduce the password to gain access. Well, that's a new one. <laughs> so if I click deduce, love is blank, but zero is start. Is that even English? It says the password is a single digit. Six. Am I being denied access to the phone I just paid $1,200 for? What if I just try zero? Zero is the only other number in there. I'm in! That was weird. So, I just looked that up, and that is a puzzle to see if you are enough of a detective to be able to use the Detective Conan phone. Clearly I am. Oh, I like this home screen better. It's much more flat and less in your face. I've just realized something about this phone's back. <laughs> this is not just glass. This is electrochromic glass, which means that if I tap one button on this phone, it can change its own chemical arrangement to modify its color. You can also apparently change it just by saying a specific command using the phone's voice assistant. I think that's the coolest phone yet. It does, and this is gonna break some boundaries. But just for context, the Decepticons are basically just the bad guys within the Transformers universe, hence the shady dark color theme. All right, so first up is a pin badge. Quite a dense quality pin badge, actually. We've got an insert that has manuals, a page of stickers, and a case. Man, I just, I love how confident the design is here. It makes this feel like a, like a proper Transformers experience, and not just like a normal phone box with the skin on it. There's a secret compartment with the charger, it's incredibly heavy. And it's also the first time I've seen a metallic finish like this. A braided cable beneath that. Again, tons of attention to detail here. I might go as far as to say that this box is even cooler than the Conan box. It even has little metal logos built into it. And then on the other side, another hidden compartment containing what they call a turbo cooler. Again, keeping with the whole metal theme. Okay, right off the bat. This is a spicy looking phone. There's so many different textures and details all in one place. And notice how it's designed so that in the light, it's incredibly reflective and vibrant, but then as soon as I tilt it, it becomes enveloped in shadow. This is a very gamery kind of home screen, but it actually calls to me. Red Magic has really tightened up their game recently. This doesn't look nearly as garish as their old phones used to. Wow, that keyboard is something though. Also some hidden LEDs inside of it. Nice touch. All right, so I have a very important test that I want to do with this phone. See. This phone has three different levels of cooling. You have just the phone as it is, with its large heat sink on the inside that passively takes heat away from the chip. You can dial it up though by turning on the fan on the inside, which apparently spins 20,000 times per minute, which is absolutely nuts. But then we can also pair that with this external cooling attachment, which is apparently using a centrifugal turbofan to achieve refrigeration levels of temperature reduction. So I'm gonna run the same performance benchmark at each of these three levels versus Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra, and let's see how much difference they make. Okay, the Samsung's on the left, the Red Magic is on the right. Let's run that first test without any extra cooling. Whoa, the Red Magic is quite significantly ahead of the Samsung. Okay, internal fan on, let's run that again. You can tell the Transformers phone is running the test even faster. So the score on the Red Magic phone has gone up by about 5%. The score on the Samsung has actually gone down. I'm actually really excited to see what happens now then. Wow, that's such a unit. Wow, the volume of air being pushed out of here is like, I could dry my hair with this. Round three, let's hit it. Okay, the gap now is just crazy. Oh my God. The Samsung score is just tanked. Whereas the Transformers phone again has gone up. But nonetheless, it goes to show that by using a cooler like this, you can very well sustain your maximum level of performance. Wow, they've added so many camera modes. And there's also a ton of genuinely interesting camera filters here too. All right, let me try and take a selfie with this cyberpunk one. Look what it's done to my eyes. Okay, but now, at number two is where the price starts to jump up dramatically. You know how the last phone was $1,400, right? 
100 is how much this phone costs. And yeah, it's not even the most expensive on this list. So if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be. I always get nervous to do these expensive phone unboxings. They always find a newfangled way of presenting these phones. Caviar Royal Gift. Getting closer and closer. It's even heavier than normal caviar boxes. $8,100. That's eight times the cost of a normal iPhone 13 Pro. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. That is so, so cool. Normally these hyper expensive phones, they're just too much. They're almost like garish, but this is actually almost tasteful. I'm a big fan of that. Let's see what else we get inside. Whew. So underneath that we have an insert, which has a, a whole load of things inside of it. So there's the certificate of ownership, there's an international warranty, there's the gift guide, and then what are you? Uh, I'm 99% sure that this is, is literally just a piece taken off a car. Maybe that's our certificate of authenticity. <laughs> okay, so we also have a charging brick. Okay, just a very standard white power brick. Very standard pair of ear pods. Then the cable, which is again, just very, very standard smartphone charging cable. But this is what I want to see. Does it? Where else? That is like two iPhones worth of weight. There's so many different sections here. And every single one has its own elevation and its own texture. Okay, so right in the middle, there's a textured aluminium plate, which is apparently made from an actual melted down Tesla. There's a, a copper insert going through the middle, which represents how it's arguably the most important metal in the construction of an electric car. It's, it's needed for all the wiring. There's these white sections, which are also lightly textured, almost like a carbon fiber type thing. And then all the black stuff is basically just titanium. And there's a reason that you don't see any mainstream titanium phones. It is up to 30 times more expensive than aluminium. But I mean, I recently shot a titanium phone with an air rifle and it actually bounced the bullet back. So the benefit is that it's extremely strong. Okay, you can see Elon Musk in the top right. Then I think it's a Tesla Cybertruck, then the logo. Below that I think is a Model S and then right at the bottom I think is a Tesla Roadster. The fact that it is just a fairly normal iPhone at its core is both a little sad for the tech person inside of me who would have loved a completely new Tesla operating system to review, but then quite possibly also a benefit for the billionaires actually buying this who already have an iPhone and just want a faff-free, fancier version of it. So this is limited edition number three out of 99. Phone number one takes this rarity to a whole new level. We're talking about a phone released back in 2015. A phone that I probably would have given my right arm to own back then and it's even rarer now. Getting this smartphone has basically been an entire year of actively monitoring eBay alerts until someone listed it. And it practically doesn't even exist on the internet anymore. The one I have here is valued at around $12,000 right now, but people have paid up to 91,000 for one of these that had a special serial number. So the lab Samsung has ever done. A wireless charging pad meant to resemble Iron Man's heart, which is fitting because that's what's keeping the phone powered up. You got the smartphone, a charger and a cable, just the standard Samsung ones, unfortunately. There's a plain ish case, but it's made to be like that to complement the phone itself. So, you know, I I'll forgive it. A pair of standard Samsung earphones. Man, remember when Samsung used to give earphones with all phones? A SIM ejector tool, a couple of documents, and then a little card to tell buyers that the film is in cinemas now. As if the five extra tickets they'd sell as a result of this actually meant something. Okay, this one plastic peel is about to cost me about $3,000 in value. Oh my gosh. It's so, it's so light. You kind of forget how light phones used to be. It's like, it's barely there. Let's turn it on. Oh my gosh. This moving parallax wallpaper is so 2015. It's also so fun to see a phone that has different colored borders to just the black that we get on everything now. Funnily enough, the S6 Edge was the first mainstream phone to ever have a curved screen. And Samsung went all in on it. You might know, by the way, that just a couple of weeks ago, I went to see Mr. Beast in America. And while I was with him, he strongly recommended that I watch